Dear members, dear colleagues, we gather here today to pray, pay tribute to Alexei Navalny in the presence of his brave wife, Yulia Navalnaya. Dear Yulia, thank you for your readiness to speak in this chamber to the world in such painful circumstances. It is truly an honor to welcome you to the European Parliament. Before we begin, I would like to invite everyone to turn their attention to the screens to watch a short video about the life and legacy of Alexei Navalny. <laughs> coraggio che ha dimostrato Alexei desta stupore e ammirazione lo hanno minacciato, maltrattato avvelenato arrestato, incarcerato ma non sono riusciti a metterlo a tacere, ha lottato instancabilmente per il popolo russo jailed opposition politician and sucker of prize laureate Alexei Navalny's condition remains of deep concern with journalists reporting it as critical. So from here, on behalf of the European Parliament, let me once again call for his immediate and unconditional release. Dear colleagues, on the 16th of February, we received the tragic news of Saharov Prize laureate Alexei Navalny's death. For many in Russia and outside, he represented hope. Hope in better days. Hope in a free Russia. Hope in the future. Hope that courage can overcome. And while his killers sought to cruelly extinguish that hope, they failed. The hope he represented remains as bright as ever. This House and its members condemn his killing in the strongest possible terms. It is a crime that deserves an international and independent investigation. The world is owed justice. While we pay tribute to his memory, I want to express our deepest condolences to you, dear Yulia, to your children, Daria and Zahar, to Alexei's parents, Lyudmila and Anatoly, 
to his family, friends, and countless supporters in Russia and across the globe. Alexei Navalny dedicated his life to the fight against corruption and for a democratic Russia. He did not give up when they tried to poison him. He did not give up when he was unjustly imprisoned. He did not give up when his sentence was extended in a sham trial. He did not give up even when confronted with suffering and injustice. And neither must we. Democracy takes bravery, and Alexei understood that. That is why he went back to Russia in 2021. That is why he could not be broken. And that is exactly what made the regime so afraid of him. But Alexei's fight endures. The many brave people who took to the streets of Russia after his death shows, yet again, the fragility of authoritarianism. I take solace in that fact that if history teaches us anything, it is that the pillars of autocracy, in the end, always, always crumble under the weight of its own corruption and people's inherent desire to live freely. And when they inevitably do, it will be thanks to what Alexei and your family did. So, dear Yulia, on behalf of the European Parliament, that stands in admiration of your courage. I thank you, and the floor is yours. Dear Madam President, dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to hear me today. After Putin tried to kill Alexei for the first time, we lived in southern Germany for several months. Alexei was recovering from the, from the poisoning, learning how to walk and try it all over again. We walked a lot, sometimes going on short trips. One of them we went to Strasbourg with the children, with our children. It is one of my and Alexei's favorite cities. We have been there several times together, and then three years ago, we decided to show it to them. Now my husband is dead. I'm back to Strasbourg, but I'm no longer walking around with my family. I stay here and address you and in your person the whole Europe. I thought that in 12 days since Alexei's murder, I would have time to prepare for this speech. But first we spent a week, a week getting Alexei's body and organizing funeral. Then I choose the cemetery and coffin. The funeral will take place the day after tomorrow. And I'm not sure yet whether it will be peaceful or whether the police will arrest those who have come to say goodbye to my husband. Thank you. However, I'm standing, standing here because your voters have an important question. They are asking you about it, and then you are asking me. The question is, how can I help you in your fight? Last Saturday was two years since Putin started a full-scale war against Ukraine. A brutal and sneaky war. The whole world rushed to Ukraine's aid, but two years passed. There is much exhaustion, much blood much disappointment, and Putin has gone nowhere. Everything has already been used. Weapons, money, sanctions, nothing is working. And the worst has happened. Everyone got used to the war. Here and there, people start to say, well, we'll have to come to an agreement with Putin anyway. And then, Putin killed my husband, Alexei Navalny, 
On his orders, Alexei was tortured for three years. He was starved in a tiny stone cell. Cut off from the outside world and denied visits, phone calls, and then even letters. And then they killed him. Even after that, they abused his body and abused his mother. On the one hand, the public murder has once again showed everyone that Putin is capable of anything and, and that you cannot negotiate with him. But on the thank you. But on the other side, I can also see how shocked everyone is. Many people have the feeling that Putin cannot be defeated at all. And in this desperation, they are now asking me, how can I help you? And I'm thinking about how Alexei would answer this question. I will try answer, but to do so, I have to tell you a little about what he was like. Alexei was inventor. He always had new ideas for everything, but especially in politics. You have elections at the beginning of June. Many of you will be campaigning, meeting voters, giving interviews, shooting commercials. Now imagine that all of this is impossible. No TV station will do an interview with you. No money in the world can help you with the commercial. And the voters who came to the meetings will be arrested along with the candidate. Welcome to Putin's Russia. And yet, Alexei Navalny has managed to become the most famous politician there. He was able to inspire millions of people with his ideas. How did he, how did he do that? He was always fantasizing and experimenting. You are not allowed on TV. Let's, let's learn how to make YouTube videos so the whole country can watch them. You are not allowed to vote. You can come up with a tactical voting strategy to take seats away from the ruling party. Even in Putin's gulag, Alexei managed to pass on, uh, to pass on ideas for projects that would make the Kremlin panic. He was the opposite of everything boring. This is the answer to the question. If you really want to defeat Putin, you have to become, become an innovator. You, are, you have to stop being boring. You can... <laughs> you cannot hurt Putin with another resolution or another set of sanctions. That is no different from the previous ones. You cannot defeat him by thinking he is a man of principle who has morals and rules. He is not like that. And Alex Alexei realized that a long time ago. You are not dealing with a, polit uh, you are not dealing with a politician, but with a bloody monster. Putin is the leader of an organized criminal gang. Putin is the leader of, uh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. And it's, it's good to repeat it again. Putin is the leader of organized criminal gang. This includes, This includes poisoners and assassins, but they are just puppets. 
the most important thing is the people close to Putin, his friends, associates, and keepers of mafia money. You and all of us must fight the criminal gang. And the political innovation here is to apply the methods of fighting organized crime, not political competition. No diplomatic notes, but investigations into the financial machinations, not statements of concern, but the source of mafia associates in your countries for discreet lawyers and financiers who are helping Putin and his friends to hide money. In this fight, you have reliable allies. There are tens of millions of Russians who are against war against Putin, against the evil he brings. We, not, we, not, <clears throat> we must not persecute them. On the contrary, you must work with them, with us. <clears throat> Putin must answer for what he has done with my country. Putin must answer for what he has done to a neighboring peaceful country. And Putin must answer for everything he has done to Alexei. <clears throat> My husband will never see what the beautiful Russia of the future will look like. But we must see it. And I will do. And, and I will do my best to make his dream come true. The evil will fall and the beautiful future will come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Navalnaya, for that powerful statement. Now we will have a round of speakers from all political groups, starting with the president of the EPP group, Manfred Weber. Madam President, Madam Navalny, I was informed about the death of Alexei Navalny at the beginning of the Munich Security Conference. Friday, 11 o'clock, Andreas Kubilius sent me a text message. My first thought was, this is not a coincidence, this is planned. This is the killer Putin behind. Last week was another final wake-up call. No one today can be so naive to doubt about the brutal and murderous nature of the Putin's regime. Dear Mrs. Navalny, our thoughts are with you and your children and all those who loved and admire your husband, Alexei Navalny. All of uh, Europe mourns a brave man killed by a brutal regime. Alex Navalny loved freedom, and for that he was deprived of it and locked up in prison. Alexei Navalny wanted a free Russia. That's why he couldn't be tolerated in Putin's unfree Russia. Alexei Navalny believed in people and knew how to inspire them. That is why the Putin regime prevented him 
from speaking. Navalny was a hope for Russia, but above all, he had hope. He had hope that the corruption will not be unpunished. His work helped identify many of Putin's friends who are now facing the toughest sanctions in Europe's history. He had hope in a democratic future for Russia. He showed Russians that one man saying no is enough to scare a regime. He had hope in power of truth, the truth that Putin hides, that Putin fears, but to which he will have to answer. Dear Ms. Navalny, we admire your courage. You are keeping alive the hope for a free and a democratic Russia. As Europeans, as Europeans and as Democrats, we will carry that hope with you together. Alexei Navalny died for freedom and democracy in Russia, just as people died for freedom and democracy in Warsaw, Berlin, Prague, in their fight against an unfree communism. Before 1988, no many, not many could have imagined that once we would be here together, living in a free and democratic Europe. So what I want to say is everything is possible. That is why we will never give up the dream of a free and democratic Russia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Weber. Now on behalf of the S&D Group, Pedro Marquez. Madam President, Madam Navalny, today we pay tribute to Alexei Navalny, the 2021 Sakharov Prize Laureate, for his courage and his ultimate sacrifice for democracy and for freedom in your country against the tyranny and the corruption of Putin's regime. He paid the highest price with his own life, but his legacy will live through you, through your family, and it will be honored through the Russian people. We express our heartfelt condolences to you, his brave wife, but also to your family. This House has repeatedly condemned, in the strongest possible terms, the persecution of Alexei Navalny, his poisoning, all the politically motivated rulings, the charges, the Trump charges, calling for his immediate and unconditional release. But you challenged us here today, and we heard you loud and clear. That is something that I want to say to you. The news of his death in the hands of the Putin regime in a remote Siberian prison outraged us and were met with the strongest condemnation. It sent shockwaves, you know, around Russia, but around the world. We could witness it personally all over Europe. Alexei was a political leader, one of the most bravest ones with powerful convictions that inspired people, raising collective conscience for what was happening, is still happening in Russia. He represented the hope and the vision for a different, for a better Russia. His death brings us back to the memories, the darkest moments in the Russian history, and the conditions of his imprisonment, and the violence he suffered makes Putin and the regime ultimately responsible for his fate. We demand an international and an independent investigation into the circumstances of his death and for all responsible for, it to be, um, to, for his detention, for his treatment, and for his death to be held account. Truth must be told, consequences must be borne, and justice must be served. The memory of Alexei will live into the ages. He was a fighter, a fighter for democracy, and a democratic Russia will prevail one day. Be brave, Madam Navalny, for your family, for Alexei's memory, but for the people of Russia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Marcus, and now for the Renew Europe Group, it's President Valérie Ayer. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Chère Madame Navalnaya, avant de m'adresser à cet hémicycle, je tiens à, à m'adresser à vous personnellement. Évidemment, le malheur, ce malheur a un retentissement politique international, mais il est avant tout un drame personnel et humain. Et je voudrais vous adresser à vous qui venez de perdre votre mari, mes sincères condoléances, à vous, à vos deux enfants, à vos proches. Votre courage est exemplaire et admirable. Merci. Et sachez que tous les démocrates ici saluent la mémoire d'Alexei Navalny. 
Alexei Navalny, c'est le symbole du courage, de l'abnégation face à l'injustice et la corruption, sans jamais, jamais faiblir. Il aura fait face jusqu'au bout à un régime qui n'a plus que pour seule réponse à toute contestation, la répression et les assassinats. Car il nous faut dire les choses clairement aujourd'hui. Oui, l'entière responsabilité de cet assassinat incombe à l'État russe, et en particulier à son président Vladimir Poutine. Alexei Navalny avait dévoilé au grand jour le système Poutine, profondément corrompu et qui a verrouillé toutes les portes du pouvoir et des institutions. Alors, si nous voulons véritablement lui rendre hommage, nous devons faire ce qu'il a toujours attendu de nous. Asphyxier Poutine et ses proches par tous les moyens. Les sanctions sont une chose, mais elles ne feront pas tout, vous l'avez dit. Les déclarations non plus. Nous devons combattre toutes les organisations qui fondent son système criminel. Chers collègues, nous ne pouvons pas laisser l'opposition russe seule face à Poutine et ses affidés. Il nous incombe de nous y opposer aussi, nous, chaque jour. Car désormais, car désormais leurs assassinats et leur propagande s'exportent aussi ailleurs en Europe. Cette propagande et ces mensonges qui ne bénéficient quand même Poutine en Russie et ses relais extrémistes chez nous. Extrêmes qui, une fois qu'ils arrivent au pouvoir, s'empressent de jouer le jeu du Kremlin. Chère Madame Navalnaya, je conclurai en vous réaffirmant tout notre soutien, mais aussi toute notre détermination à vous accompagner dans votre courageux combat pour cette Russie démocratique et libre que vous appelez de vos voeux. Nous ne vous laisserons pas seuls, nous serons là, à vos côtés, jusqu'au bout. Merci. Merci, Madame Ayer. And now the co-president of the Green Group, Terry Reinske. Dear colleagues, dear Julia Navalnaya, um, it is hard to imagine what you have been going through in these last weeks, months, years. And when you were speaking about how you and your husband with your family were visiting Strasbourg a while ago and how you miss him right now, I was imagining what it would do to me if I lost my beloved partner to a brutal regime. And I know that probably it cannot even touch the pain that you have been feeling, but let me tell you on behalf of my whole group that we share this pain, we strongly support you, and we are by your side in this difficult time. In order to keep your husband's memory alive, we have to do everything in our power, not only to demand an independent investigation, but also to protect the remaining political prisoners in Russia and all those who are suffering from this brutal regime. The murder of Alexei Navalny has made it clear yet again. The biggest enemy of Vladimir Putin is democracy. The biggest enemy of Vladimir Putin is freedom. Freedom and democracy are what Putin is most afraid of because they threaten his democratic rule and they were symbolized by your brave late husband. They threaten his system based on corruption and lies. So our struggle has to be even more determined. Let us fight for our democracy and freedom here in Europe, but also let us stand in solidarity with all those fighting for it in Russia and elsewhere in the world. And even in this difficult time, when we all have difficult debates back home, when there are a lot of political challenges ahead of us, colleague, we, colleagues, we can never forget the price that so many political prisoners in Russia, in Belarus and elsewhere are paying to fight for freedom and democracy. If they have the strength to fight and pay this price, we cannot be tired. If they have the strength to go on, we have to do all we can in order to support them. Because in the end of the day, I am sure, and I want to say this to you, in the end of the day, freedom will win. There will be a free Russia, and we will fight for you. We will fight for it side by side together with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Reinske. And now for the ECR group, Nicola Procaccini. Grazie, Presidente. Sono intervenuto molte volte in quest'Aula, eppure mai come oggi sento il peso delle parole eh, per la commozione che ci attraversa tutti, per il senso della storia che ci sembra di poter cogliere in questo momento. Ho ascoltato le parole della signora Navalnaia eh, cercando di mantenere un rispettoso distacco per non lasciarmi influenzare dall'emozione, eh, ma è stato difficile. Personalmente seguo le vicende politiche di Alexei Navalny da anni. Ho sempre apprezzato 
il coraggio e la fantasia, la serenità e la fede con cui ha portato avanti le proprie idee, anche quando in pochi riuscivano a comprenderne il senso, il valore. Un estremista, così lo hanno etichettato talvolta il mainstream occidentale e solitamente la televisione pubblica di Putin. In realtà Alexei Navalny era solo un uomo innamorato della Russia, della sua storia e della sua gente. Cristiano, nato in una famiglia di militari, Alexei non era un pacifista, ma si è sempre battuto per la sua patria senza armi né paura. Hanno provato a ucciderlo tante volte, nei modi più vigliacchi, c'erano quasi riusciti, ma niente. Così lui ha dato un bacio a sua moglie, ha salutato i suoi ragazzi, ha preso un aereo ed è tornato in Russia, dove sapeva che ad attenderlo ci sarebbe stata la più terribile delle prigionie e la più scontata delle morti. È finita la sua esistenza, ma non il suo sogno di una Russia libera dai, dai tiranni e in pace con il mondo. Qualcuno ha detto beato quel popolo che non ha bisogno di eroi. Io non sono d'accordo. Tutti i popoli ne hanno bisogno, in pace come in guerra. Sono quegli uomini e quelle donne che parlano agli altri e per gli altri, anche quando tutti sono muti e solitari. Come quel ragazzo che nell'agosto di tanti anni fa affrontò da solo la morte bruciandosi davanti ai carri armati sovietici che invadevano Praga. Il giorno in cui è morto Jan Palak ha vinto la libertà ed è nata l'Europa che amiamo. Sarà lo stesso per Alexei Navalny. Il 16 febbraio hanno ucciso un uomo libero, ma ne sono nati migliaia in Russia, in Europa e nel mondo. Grazie. Thank you, Mr. Procaccini. Now for the ID group, Jack Madison. Thanks so much, Madam President, uh, dear Ms. Navalnaya. First of all, from our political group, all the regrets goes to you and for your children, for your son and daughter, because the biggest loss what you can have is to lose your father as a children. So that's why it was very emotional to listen to your, your statement, and I agree that most of us will absolutely feel what do you feel, even if it's very hard for us to feel the same as you are doing. You were saying uh, absolutely right things about Russia, the current Russia, what we have today. And the very sad story is that the independent polling stations have shown that too many people are still supporting the regime of Putin. They're supporting the ideas of the old imperialist Russia. There are about 70% of the people who are saying that, yes, we have to restore the great Russia and should have the same kind of borders what they had in history. But the other side of the coin is that almost 30% of the Russian people doesn't like those ideas. It means that about 30 million people in Russia would like to have a normal country with a stability, with a freedom and peace. And as I'm from Estonia, of course, we feel it like from the bones. Like, what is, what is it like to live next to the country who would like to occupy you? But it gives hope also for us to have a normal future, normal cooperation, because I, I'm sure that everybody here in this room would like to have a normal cooperation with the biggest country in the world, that's called Russia to have a normalized relations, to have a normal economy, to have a normal friendship. And that's also my looking forward, forward, like for the future, that maybe in the future one day it is possible to have normalized relations with our neighbors. And that gives the hope that there are still about 30 million people, including you, who are standing against this regime and hoping for a better Russia and a better future. I think it's said enough. I really wish the best for you and for your children. And I'm more than sure that in one day we will have a great country called Russia who has no kind of imperialist ideas and will have a normal relations with all the neighbors in Europe. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Madison. Finally, on behalf of the left group, Nikolai Willemsen. Thank you, President. Dear Yulia Navalnaya, it is both good and very sad to see you here today in Strasbourg. It is so incredibly sad because of the reason for you being here is so tragic and wrong. Nobody 
should have to die for speaking up for what they believe in. All of us here today mourn with you the loss of your husband, Alexei Navalny. A man who became one of the symbols of resistance to Putin's regime, who stood up for what he believed in and spoke out loud. Also in the face of repression. Alexei Navalny helped expose Putin to the world. He shined a light on the enormous corruption of Putin and his oligarch friends. It was something that clearly frightened Putin. Because despots like Putin are afraid of facts, of debate, of truth. And your husband tried to bring forward all of that. And for that, for that he was poisoned and he was accused by the Putin regime. He was unjustly jailed, tortured, and he paid the ultimate price. And yet, despite the sadness and the loss that led here, it is also good to hear you and to see you speaking out here today in Strasbourg. Because it means that Putin did not succeed in silencing the critique. It means that the fight against repression continues. Dear Yulia Navalnaya, to offer you my condolences seems way too little. What I can offer you is my profound respect and admiration for the work of your husband and of you. And for everyone, for everyone who dares to stand up against despots like Vladimir Putin. May the death of Alexei Navalny not be in vain. May democracy triumph in the end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear colleagues. Thank you, Ms. Navalny. This session is now closed.